So in this video I'm going to show you how to fit heavy duty snow chains to a four wheel drive. And the first thing you've got to do is make absolutely certain that the chains will actually fit the tyre that you're working with and don't assume that just because chains fitted one specification of tyre they'll fit exactly the same specification of another tyre. So for example all 265, 70, 17 tyres are not exactly the same width and diameter so you have to get this checked before you go. Now the things you're going to need is obviously a set of chains which actually do fit. For four wheel drive off road purposes you do want the heavier duty um, stuff as opposed to the lighter weight stuff that um, might be fitted to a road car going up to a resort. Um, a set of gloves pretty essential for working with chains and also your hands are going to be cold as well. A block of wood, I'll show you what that's for in a moment, and a tarp is always useful in cold and wet conditions. So you've made sure that the chains are going to fit the tyres, now you need to decide which set of wheels you're going to fit them to. Look in the owner's manual because you'll find out for a lot of vehicles you can only fit them to the back wheels such as my Ranger PX and the reason for that is that there's often pretty limited clearances around the front around the control arms as you can see here and that's even before you go for wider or taller tyres. Now if you do have a choice of front or back, there is a religious debate, do you put it on the front or the back if you don't have four? I tend to go for the front because I like to have grip and steering as well as drive. So once you've got your working area set up, get your chains, pull them out one at a time and you'll find that they're probably a bit tangled. So the first thing you need to do is to pull them well and truly out, untangle them and make sure that they're also free of damage. So for example, no excess rust, missing links, that sort of thing. Also ensure that outside of the chain faces outwards. For example, the tensioner is on the outside here. Now make sure your chain is exactly behind the tyres you're going to put it on, rear in this case, and exactly lined up so you can reverse straight back over it in a moment. And this is what we need the wooden block for. So take that and put it about one third of the way along the chain from the point nearest to the tyre. So the chain's ready to be put on and we're about to put the car over the chain and then we can fit it. Now very gently back the car up onto the block. I generally use four low for this just to give me a little bit more control. You can feel when the tyre is on the block, but if not, just get someone to guide you. So this is the purpose of the block. It allows the chain to move freely. If the block wasn't there, the tyre would be resting on the chain and that would make it a lot harder to fit. I also made this up for use in softer conditions. Now take the back two thirds of the chain and carefully loop it around the tyre. And just keep pulling it until it's pretty much over the tyre. Don't try and get it exactly right at this point, but just get it pretty much over uh, the tyre. And this is why I use a third, because it's easier just to work with two thirds at the back and one third at the front, as opposed to half and half. So there's the chain going on, and this is where you start to appreciate gloves and the fact it's up on the block. You connect the front connector there. There's another view of the front connector. You can shorten the chain by link or two and then the same around the back connect that one and the chain is then basically on. So there's a close up view, I haven't shortened the chain for that for the front one but for the purpose of demonstration I have shortened it for the rear as you can see there. Basically if you can shorten a chain do so, tight chains are good chains. Now if the chain basically connected, centralise it on the tyre as much as you can and again this is where having the tyre up on the block will really help. So it should look something like this when you are finished, pretty well centralised. And here's an example of a chain which is not centralised. So we've both got front and back hooks connected and now the chain centralised. Next we take the choker chain or the tensioner chain and pull it as tight as you can around the circumference. I do each section in turn. And once you've got that absolutely as tight as you can, you need to put a bit of effort into it then you, what you need to be doing is connecting that to the final connector which is what I'm doing now and that should be reasonably difficult to do and that way you know that it's going to be tight enough. So here's a close-up of the tensioner chain. I'm trying to 
keep my, myself out of the way of the camera whilst connecting it up but it should take a bit of effort to actually do that last little bit and in that way now you've got it reasonably tight and done so now we've got a bit of tensioner chain left over so you basically just pass that through the opposite areas of the chain just thread it in and out doesn't really matter exactly where it goes I'm just pulling it here and here and then that yellow bit is rubber so you can just hook it into something under a bit of tension make sure a bit of force on it again is good because tension is good on chains and then that's it the chain is now basically on now carefully drive off your block of wood and just drive no more than about 5 to 10 metres because what you're doing now is going to do a check um, to, for tension because even after that short distance the chain will slightly become loose you need to take up that slack. So in this case I'm going backwards but out in the bush you'd probably just drive forwards 5 or 10 metres. So you don't need to go back up on the block um, for this but undo the, the chain, the tensioner chain and then just starting all the way from the start of it just pull it again as tight as you can all the way through put some force into it because if the chain becomes loose then that can start to damage brake lines and bodywork and who knows what else there and once you pulled it as hard as you can put it back in the um, connector like I'm doing at the moment again this is where gloves are really handy then once that's done again just take the excess thread it through opposite areas of the chain system like that and you can just use that rubber bit at um, the end there just to get a bit of extra tension doesn't matter exactly where it goes but just choose somewhere and that's it that chain is now complete ready to go now to take it off you just reverse the procedure so you unhook that rubber tensioner and then feed it backwards all the way through it will come off there we go I'm doing these videos exactly pretty much in one takes not trying to pretend that it's easier or harder than um, it normally is um, it can be a bit tricky with, with, with chains so there's the main connector there undo that and then once that's done we can just unhook the front one and then we unhook the one at the back too make sure you do unhook the one at the back before you dry, dry, try and drive off and then just gently take the chain hang it over the back and the front's already fallen away and that's it we can now simply slowly drive off the chain and then we can put the chain away into its bag make sure that it is dry um, and the, everything is dry and it's stored in a dry place you really don't want rust forming now here's an example of a chain in use I'm just really crawling up this um, snowy slope here it's not super deep snow but there's mud underneath and because I've got the rear chains on I can do that it just really makes a massive massive difference um, when you've got chains don't use momentum so I hope you found this video useful if you've got any questions please drop them in the comments and happy and safe snow driving thanks for watching